and I befriended a guard there. And we got to talking one day, and she started sharing some things with me, and she said, oh, you really don't know what I'm talking about. You can't understand. She said, you come in here every day, and you have a smile on your face, and you look so nice. And, and I looked at her, and I said, I said, girl, if you only knew. I said, let me tell you. I said, I know what it's like for somebody to do open heart surgery on you without anesthesia. That's a good word. I said, I know what that's like. That's I word. said, I, you know, I said, I could tell you some stories that would bring you to tears. But I know that God had a plan for me because I could tell you some stories that will make your toes curl about how God, how good God was to me, how he watched over me, he shielded me, he protected my mind. You know, I told her, I said, I know what it's like to feel like you just want to lay down and die. I, I remember one night I, I woke up early in the morning and I wanted to cry. And I knew if I cried, I knew I was going to have a nervous birthday. I knew it. And I heard this inner voice inside of me say, you better not cry. You better not cry. And I and I and I, I laid down and I went to sleep. And later in the morning, maybe around five o'clock in the morning, I felt this presence wake me up. And I heard this voice say to me, You can cry now. And I broke down and I cried, I boo like a little baby, and I just felt the warmth of God just cover me. And it felt like a human being was hugging me. And I cried, I cried, and I got it out, and I went back to sleep for my hour or two hours, and I got up, got dressed, and I went on to work and did what I had to do. You know, facing opposition from colleagues, from the people that we service. Um, I used to, a large part of my career in the federal government, I was involved in resolving disputes between employees and management. And I had to deal with the union, and um, I had to know rules and regulations, and to know EEOC, uh, Equal Employment Opportunity Regulations. I had to know the contract. And I was the youngest person on the staff. And then I looked young, so everybody thought I was this little baby. But what you see is not what you get, <laughs> you know. Um, and people did everything they could to get me removed from my job because they could not sit in my office and tell me what to do. My passion, one of my passions, is about community. We have a lot of local nonprofits that do great work in the community. But it costs to do that work. I've worked in, in a community ministry nonprofit, so I'm very familiar with the grant thing. I have, I have created my own nonprofit but decided I wasn't going to implement it because I want to fund it. I don't want anybody telling me what I can say, what I can't say, what I can do, and what I can't do. And what, I'm, what I've been suggesting to some people when I talk to who have nonprofits is to be your own funding source. Now, I'm not knocking grants. You know, they serve a purpose. But... There are lots of examples of businesses that generate revenue that have created nonprofit owners. And those, the revenue they take from that business and they donate it to those nonprofits and they set, they, they have their, their, um, their vision, what they want, they have their mission, they have their goals, they have their policies, they have their objectives, and they don't worry about, if they want to say boo hissle, the sky is green, 
they're not concerned about somebody saying, oh, no, you can't say that. If you say that, we're going to cut your funding. They're not concerned about, and I'm going to try to say this in a nice way. Oh, they're not concerned about all of the <clears throat> who struck John. I'm going to say it this way. I've been in that arena with grantees and they are pandering to the grantor. You can pursue your own mission. I'm so glad you asked this question because <laughs> I'm hoping that I'm motivated. <laughs> um, you can pursue your own mission and you don't have to water down your mission or cater your mission to a grant because you need funding. And I, I'm, I'm not I'm not oblivious to the fact that nonprofits need money. They need money. Our communities need money. When I hear people talk about, you know, we got to have control over this and control over that, how are you going to control it if you don't have the dollars? If you have to ask, if you have to apply, if you have to beg, if you have to pander, and I know I'm probably, see this, I don't like to say this stuff in public, but it's Motivational Monday, and I'm going to give you what, what, what you can't hear. Okay? Yeah. Because when, the past when, finish here, past Michael Jordan. When, when you can control your destiny, we can't control our own communities if we are not economically sound. We're not, and I have, I have talked to people over the years, and it has... And, and I have it in my article. I was asked this question. I, and it's hurt my heart. I'm like, you know, I have this, at that point, it was an opportunity, but something that could possibly help you generate some revenue for your nonprofit. People, you, people wouldn't, didn't even want to give me 30 minutes. They get on a Zoom and five minutes they're gone. You don't, you, how can you make a decision about something or that which you don't have the full information? And then a week or two later, I'm <coughs> on some email stream because they're asking for donations. Well, I just presented a business to you and everything is not for everybody. I'm not upset because you <coughs> didn't avail yourself. I'm upset because you didn't take the time to fully understand what I was presenting to you and then make an informed decision. If you had stayed on the Zoom or you had allowed me to present to you what I was wanted to present, ask me questions. And if I can't answer them, I got people who can answer them. I don't know everything. And I told you, I'm very transparent. I am a real deal. I don't lie. I don't make stuff up. I, I can look at myself in the mirror every morning and feel good. In fact, I feel great about me. I'm loving myself. And I didn't need Mary J. Blige to tell me, good morning, beautiful. I, you know, we're gorgeous, whatever. So what I'm saying is, we have to be open and oftentimes we are behind the curve and with this energy space we are there are people that are ahead of us but this is still a great time for you to get in where you fit in we got solar we we have solar and i said all houses have to have solar or there's going to be a tax. Right now, we have incentives. This flyer, get paid to go solar. $7,500 tax rebate and a $1,000 cash rebate. And one of the things that I love about our founders, John and Cynthia Rustin, they are beautiful people. They are people of integrity. And one of the things that our founder talked about was understanding this solar space and how a lot of companies have come through and they haven't done the best. They haven't employed the best business practices. We have a wide energy store in Atlanta, Georgia, in Alpharetta, Georgia, as a matter of fact. 
This is how serious we are. And we, our goal is to open these stores throughout the United States. And look out, because one is coming to the DMV area. 